Statutory warning that the first slide can contain some sort of harmful image, but after that it's a pleasant ride because the second picture is of Virat Kohli. Imagine you were born with a skin disease like this, urticaria. Gross, right? I had this for 16 years of my life all over my body. To add to this, I was also an extremely mediocre kid. When I say that, I flunked geography in 7th standard. Now, you know how Indian parents are, right? You, when you get your report card back home, mom's going to say, Oh, did you see Lakshmi auntie's son? They don't even have a roof on their house and he scored so many marks or she scored so many marks. That's pre pre predominantly how my childhood was. Right? Um, fast forward to 10th standard. I got 76% and my dad walks up to me and he says, Lalit, nobody in our family's history has ever gotten 76%. When you have, what kind of doctor do you want to become? I said, oh, what kind of doctor? The only doctor I visited is a pediatrician, which is a child specialist. And I said, okay, I'll become a pediatrician. Fast forward to 12th standard on the day of my results. I stay very far off from this place in a place called Banshangri. Uh, I went to the nearby cyber cafe, entered my number, registration number, and poop, the results came out and I had gotten 56%. I had passed PCMB and without even studying math. My mom looked at me and she, and she said, uh, Lalit, forget being a doctor. You don't even qualify to be a nurse or a watchman in a hospital. So what do you decide on becoming? And before I said anything, she went on to say, we don't care. And all of a sudden, within no time, I realized that my parents had given up on me. Given up on me to such a point that they said, do whatever the hell you want, that meant go to commerce college. I went to a commerce college. The best possible thing ever happened in my life that commerce was easy to study compared to science. And I studied in the school called Bishop Cotton Boys School throughout my school. And here's the thing. I was the most average kid possible. And if there was a talk or an elocution competition like this, I would be the kid sitting right at the back playing hand cricket with my friends. That's the dude I was. Right? Within no time, there was one aspiration that I had. Not to top the school or get high marks, but to be on stage and earn the respect of my audience. I wanted to be a public speaker. But I never got the opportunity because Mr. Articaria and Average never got a chance because the toppers or the smartest brains in the school always did. Now, second PUC didn't go my way and until I was 18, I was absolutely average and nothing great ever happened in my life. But, during my Freshers' Fest, I took part in a debate come elocution competition. And when I was speaking, the judge stopped me and, and the judge said, uh, his name was Dr. Rajdeep Manwani. He said, Lalit, you speak, you speak like as if you're the relative of uh, the queen from England. That means I was faking my accent. If you want to become a better public speaker, go join this place called a Toastmasters Club. I said, what's a Toastmasters Club? Friday, 6.30 p.m., Loyola Hall, St. Mark's Road. I was there and I opened the door and everything hit slow motion. I saw people who were much more older to me in age. People who were like CEOs, bankers, retired army officers. People from all walks of life. And I was the youngest chap in that room. Within no time, I realized that all these people came there to only overcome the fear of speaking on a stage. I said, wow. College nor school gave me a chance, but this place is giving me a chance. When I was competing with people far above my experience level, if I was here, all these CEOs, bankers, principals, teachers, whoever were a part of the Toastmasters club were almost my dad's age. Guess what happened? I lost every single competition I took part in Toastmasters, but every time I went back to college, I won almost every competition and here's why. Consider yourself playing cricket. If you played cricket with Virat Kohli, chances are he is going to teach you a lesson that you should never play in cricket ever again. But if you come back to school and play against your school friends, you will be Virat Kohli too then. That's exactly what happened. Because I was losing in Toastmasters, every time I came back to my college, I started winning against my peers. And within no time, by the end of my third year, I had amassed close to 150 awards 
in public speaking. I had gotten a scholarship to study in Ireland at the University of Limerick and I am not lying. Well, there you go. Uh, I ended up getting this. Remember, I was the same guy who got 56%, the same guy that people called me the deceased fellow and the same guy that most people didn't want to be friends with. And all of a sudden, I had a scholarship, I was the president of my student council and everything was working my way. Now, that was the tipping point of where I would move from a failure to a successful person. The best was yet to come. I started my company, More Than Textbook, where we worked with close to 20,000 students, helping them develop public speaking schools just like you. On the other side, I also became a content creator. I had the chance to meet the who's who of the content creation world. I have close to 60,000 followers on Instagram, YouTube, and all my social media combined. And most importantly, I shared the stage with Dr. Kiran Bedi and Arvind Kejriwal. Last year, I was invited on April 16th and 17th to speak at IAM. If I ever walked in to IAM with my 56% degree certificate, I would have been chased out by the watchman. But I was called as a guest speaker. All of this was possible simply because I learned the art of public speaking and the, I learned the art of failing. Why did I tell you this? You are thinking, Lalit, your talk is supposed to be about public speaking skills. Why are you telling this? Which brings me to my first point. Every great TEDx talk always has a story, just like the one I just narrated. I didn't cook it up. It's my real story. But if you saw the last speaker as well, she spoke about her story. If you Google the top 10 TEDx uh, talks of all time, each one of them have their stories. If you want to be a great speaker, use your story. Now, what's so great about your story? Your story is unique. You see your friend next to you. That friend can have parents who are completely different from yours. That friend can have different tastes in maybe the kind of K-drama you're watching. That friend could love a different sport from what you love. That friend can have a different choice of an IPL team that they support. Everything is different even if you're almost all the same. So share your personal stories. Your personal story is like your signature. It is completely different even though it serves the same purpose. Now you might be asking, what kind of personal stories do I share? One can be of your childhood. The second could be about your career experiences, your relationships, your past memories, and most importantly, your personal experiences. Now, this is one example of um, Dr. Ivan Joseph, and this is the sixth or seventh most watched TED Talk of all time, and he starts with a personal story of him being a failure. And this is something that you should check out once you go back home, which brings me to my next point. Grab attention. Everybody likes attention. Everybody wants attention, but not many people know how to grab it. But if you ask me, Lalit, how do I learn how to grab attention? I say, my dear friend, learn it from a YouTube ad. YouTube ad gives you a five second window before you hit skip. You know why? You can grab people's attention only in the first few seconds. If the talk isn't great, you cannot grab attention. Today, attention is everything. So, if you want to be a great speaker, a content creator, guess what? You need to grab attention. I'll give you an example of a tech talk. Do you see this guy? He's a little different from us. He looks different, right? His name is Sam Burns and he has a title called My Philosophy for a Happy Life. Now, you might be thinking, this person who looks so differently from us is preaching happiness. With everything in my hands, I'm already not happy. But this fellow looks so different. I'm sure he's bullied. I'm sure he's ragged. How can he be happy? Doesn't it grab attention even without you looking into the talk? Yes or no? Simple. Grab attention. This talk grabs my attention even before I watch it. If you want to be a content creator, if you want to be a public speaker, the first few seconds is where you grab attention. Grab attention instantly because attention is very hard. The skip button. Every time you, you prepare for a talk, remember this thing. Oh, this is a school. No, censor. Your third point is kiss. Oh, you need to learn how to kiss. Now, when I say kiss, it's called keep it simple, silly. 
Okay. Every single public speaker who's absolutely great keeps it super simple. Now, what do I mean by this? You take a very complicated idea and give it a very simple doable solution. That's how you become great. If you see these two TED Talks, you see their titles. Now, this is something very profound. Okay, Many people fail to do this. The first title is called Why People Believe They Can't Draw and How to Prove They Actually Can. How many of you believe you're terrible artists? Raise your hands, please. Well, you see, all of us think we're terrible artists, but if you actually see this video, he'll prove to you how you could be great artists even if your sketching artistry skills are absolutely garbage. Okay? And he'll teach you in the nicest way and he'll help you do it right there. With no help than a marker and a piece of paper. On the other side, uh, do you know that if you want to be great at something like public speaking, you have to spend 10,000 hours doing it? Do you know that? If you want to be great at it, but how many of us really want to be great? Uh, I want to be good at it. If you want to be good at something, it takes only 20 hours. People often don't do certain things because let, let's say learning the guitar. Everybody thinks learning the guitar is easy. Learning an instrument is super chill. And you go to guitar class or an instrument class and in three classes you're like, I don't want to do this. Have you ever felt that? But what if I told you it took only 20 hours to learn something? Right? Now this guy just does that. He says the first 20 hours, how to learn anything. He's simply trying to say how to learn a new skill. How to learn a new skill sounds so complicated. But if you, if I tell you how to learn anything in 20 hours, I'm sure I've, got, I've, got you, I've gotten your attention and most importantly, I've kept it super simple. My next point. Oh, your body speaks louder than words. In communication, 65 to 70% of what you say is actually not what you say. It's about how you say it. It's your body that is actually speaking. If you realize, as I'm speaking to you, I am pointing my fingers towards you. I showed you a comparison between me and these very accomplished people in Toastmasters. I was using my hands to show you comparisons. Great speakers often don't speak like this. They don't put their hands in their pocket. Or have you seen, like, you know, you might have observed a few speakers. Sometimes they'll be going to and fro and like cha cha cha. <laughs> Some people have a pen in their hand and go click 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 click. These are signs of nervous speakers. Or sometimes people will put full weight on the table like that and uh, almost stand like Dua Lipa. Right? Not gonna happen. If you, the best way to have good body language is to have at least a one foot gap between your legs. Use your hands to show comparisons between small and big, short and tall. Use it wisely. And most importantly, your facial expressions. If I talk to you like this throughout my entire talk, I can still say what I want to say. But will you feel it? Will you laugh? No, you won't. I hate pineapple on pizza. I hate pineapple on pizza. You see, you feel it. Your face has to showcase what you're feeling. That's why facial expressions are important. So use your body while you're speaking. It doesn't matter if you're not a loudspeaker, it's okay. What do you think she's saying? Oh my God! No! You see, she's saying something loud and she's super expressive, isn't it? The next one. This is called power of pause. Great speakers often have two things. It's called the two P's. Power. Power when they're saying something. How many of you, I don't know if you've ever watched the 2011 World Cup, but when Dhoni hits a six, Ravi Shastri ends up saying, and it's a six, Dhoni has won the World Cup for India after 27 years. I don't know, 27 years, but yeah, he says that anyway. As iconic as a six is, that dialogue of Ravi Shastri is even more memorable. Why? Because of the power he's using in his voice. Pause. If I keep speaking like this continuously, you'll be like, what the hell is this dude speaking right in front of me? But if I say, hey, the power of pause. If you want to be a great speaker, you've got to know the power of pause. 
you see every time i'm speaking there's a subtle one second gap between everything that i'm saying the audience will be able to remember what you're saying and it won't feel like you're nervous and you're running a train okay so use the power of pause in fact i feel the power of pause is just like salt if a chef uses too much salt it look very weird and it tastes disgusting but if the chef uses the right amount of salt it's just perfect and i think when you use pauses you have to use the right amount that's just like salt and the perfect example for that is to how to learn any language in 6 months check this tedx talk and he'll teach you how to learn how to use pauses by actually demonstrating it and finally all of these things will fall flat if you want to be a content creator or a public speaker trust me it's like this iceberg you have to practice and you have to put the effort it's easy for a it's easy for a person for me to come and do this even right now while i was speaking to you i did fumble a couple of times and that's okay but you got to get better over time nothing's ever perfect you got to practice and you got to fail your way through it the only place where they don't allow you to fail is in school but in reality you have to fail and learn it's the fundamental philosophy of life okay you cannot be a great public speaker or a content creator without making terrible speeches and messy videos you have to do that finally have fun when you're speaking have fun you you saw me come out there pull you guys out try doing something and me trying to crack a bunch of dad jokes and hoping that you guys would laugh have fun this place is not for you to show that you're mr perfect or miss perfect have fun enjoy the game if you don't have fun here's my point to prove it 79 million and 52 million what's 79 and 52 million you know what that is that's the difference between the first tedx talk that's been viewed 79 million times and the second ted talk ted ted talk that's been viewed 52 million times yeah that's the difference and uh, the difference is 27 million views between the first one and the second most viewed tedx talks you know why here's why the second one is educative my philosophy for a happy life the first one is beatbox brilliance nobody cares about gyan nobody cares about education everybody cares about entertainment i want to chill and have fun so make your talk fun make your content videos fun make anything you do fun and that's why meme pages have millions of followers and ranveer alabadia and rajshwani have 1.6 million followers period okay on that note ladies and gentlemen thank you so much